So in this session, I really want to look at Windows 8, how we use it, how we can navigate around some of the major changes. But to really start with that, I want to briefly look at the history of Windows. And the reason I want to do this is a lot of what we see in Windows 8 is actually because of evolutions in hardware, how people work, and even things we see way back in the first version of Windows are still there today in Windows 8. And by seeing how things have evolved, it actually helps us understand sort of why Windows 8 functions and acts the way it does. So when we go back all the way to really 1985, we see Windows 1, which runs on top of DOS, and it introduced the first graphical interface that was really just a, a GUI plug-on for DOS but it could allow me to run multiple applications at the same time. Windows 2 introduced an updated graphical interface. It was a bit cleaner, some more colors, uh, a minimal control panel, but I had notepad paint, all those things. I, I'm gonna show you all of these. Then we saw Windows 2.1 in 1988. Then Windows 3 was the, the big changer in 1990. It introduced the program manager shell, um, file manager. Um, a really revamped control panel. Um, important things like Solitaire, Hearts, and Minesweeper. But this shell right here, so introduced in 1990, would really be that key interface for the next five years. And that was adopted also with Windows Workgroups, which allowed some connectivity, some domains, and sharing resources between a group of machines. We saw Windows NT 3.1, which is not based on DOS. Um, it's actually based on the NT kernel, but it shared that same interface, the program manager interface. We could have advanced user management, create domains, etc. So we're in Windows NT 3.5. And then in 1995, we saw Windows NT 3.51, but the big change was Windows 95. So there were problems that I'm going to talk about later on about the program manager and how you have many apps running and still access the shell. So Windows 95 introduced the start button, uh, Windows Explorer for better management, and also 1995 saw the first version of Internet Explorer. Windows NT4 also adopted the uh, Explorer shell. Then we saw a sec uh, Windows 98. Carrying on, we see a second version of Windows 98. Windows 2000, which on the server side is Active Directory, so a big shift. Windows ME, again, still running on DOS, uh, actually, as was Windows 98 second edition. I missed that out. And that is the last version. So Windows ME is the last version of Windows that actually runs on top of DOS. And Windows ME, um, wasn't actually used a huge amount. It actually had some very good features in. But Windows XP was released the following year. And Windows XP finally unified the sort of home user and professional versions of Windows. XP was NT based, so there was no DOS running underneath it. And it proved a very, very stable and very, very um, user friendly operating system, which is why it's still so heavily used today. Did it get a new interface, got the Lunar theme or Windows XP? Uh, Xbox was released back then in 2001 and Halo. Then we have a special XP Media Center edition for better media capabilities, Windows Server 2003. So just really evolutions, but all of these are still using that Explorer shell. They're still using that start menu. They're still using um, Windows Explorer. Still the same application model. Windows Vista really updated the graphical interface with Aero and Aero Glass. So the start button is replaced now with just this orb. Um, the windows are translucent, the thicker edges. There are some nice graphical capabilities using desktop composition for thumbnail previews, which really come into their own with sort of Windows 7. So Windows 7 really takes the Aero to the next level with Flip 3D, Aero Peak, the thumbnails view comes a lot richer. The taskbar changes to just show me icons now. In, in Windows 7, I can pin applications. But really, even up to Windows 7, we're still using that same start menu 
that we had way back in Windows 95. And of course, Windows 95 was designed back in 1993. So we're talking 20 years ago. So an interface that was designed 20 years ago is still what's being used. Um, and that's changing. So where I want to obviously get to is Windows 8. And over the last 20 years, the way people work with their computers, the expectations uh, have modified. Obviously touch is now a much bigger feature. And so now I actually want to take through and walk through some of these operating systems I've talked about, actually get, get some hands on before really showing uh, Windows 8 and how to use it. So starting with actually Windows 2, uh, I tried my best I could not get Windows 1 to run in any kind of virtualization because of the graphics problems. Um, this is uh, an MS-DOS 6.2 and I've got Windows 2 installed. So for any of us to ever use it, just launch it with Win. So I made some changes to the configuration after I installed the Windows 2. Um, basically I wanted to use the DOS a sort of smart drive, high mem utilities instead of what ships with Windows 2. So I get this message and I, I don't want to reinstall. Um, but I get past that. And this is the Windows 2 shell. But it is similar to Windows 1. Um, very, very basic uh, graphical interface. But I can run applications. You can see here I can minimize it and it's still sort of showing me the time in that window. I have the advanced control panel, which was introduced in Windows 2. So I can do some basic configurations in here. I have write, notepad. So applications have actually carried on. For a while I can minimize that. I can go and launch paint and not be artistic, whatever. Um, and obviously a big change in Windows 2 is they can overlap. So uh, I can create this, which was fairly sophisticated for the time, uh, interface. I can do different things. Now, as hardware advanced, there was more memory, higher specification processors, and better graphics. Um, Windows 3 really introduced a completely new interface. This is Windows 3. And we can see we really tidied up the graphics of the interface. It's a lot cleaner, more colors. I have the file manager utility with these buttons so I can actually perform various actions. I can navigate very easily what's going on, see my CD drives, um, view different attributes of the file system um, and the actual data stored within. Again, I can minimize and maximize things. A much richer control panel. changes there. If I want to add networking, which I don't have on this particular VM. Change graphical options. Same accessories, so paint's got nicer. I can change my colors and everything else. Fantastic work of art. Minimize it. And obviously very importantly, oh, don't want to minimize that. The games. So these are obviously still here in, in the latest version of the Windows, graphically spewed up a little bit, but very powerful games for the time. But underneath there's still DOS. So this is still MS DOS underneath. But one of the challenges you start to find with this interface is well, as I get more and more applications, when I want to go and launch another application, I need to get back to Program Manager. I'm constantly having to close things down or rearrange to, to get to Program Manager to access and start other applications. But the interface actually did survive in another. So Windows NT also used the Program Manager interface. This is NT 3.1. And so if I log on, get lots of errors. <laughs> um, but it looks exactly the same. Still the same program manager. I have file manager, the control panel. I have Windows NT set up instead of the basic setup, but it's really doing the same sort of functions. Print manager. Um, I also have administrative tools. So I've got user manager. I can create users. The, the built-in groups. From here, I can obviously do domain management going forwards. Backup. 
performance monitor, et cetera, event viewer. Like, again, the things that we still see today. And of course, the all important games. Um, and this obviously survived all the way through to Windows NT 3.51. So this is the interface and many of the challenges that face the desktop in terms of wanting to run many applications don't apply so much to the server anyway. Um, but Windows 95, uh, we see a brand new interface. So Windows 95 interface really introduced the star button. And this was this cascading menu where I can select and my programs expand out. Can document settings inside the control panel, taskbar settings, the printers, help. Just a completely different interface that's always available. As I start applications, they show down on the taskbar. It's very easy, even if the screen is full, I can still very quickly get to the start button and launch new things. Internet Explorer becomes part of the operating system. Um, I think I've got version four as part of some updates. Yes, this is version four. I, I couldn't actually find any websites that would load correctly. I found something um, like a basic, just trying to get something to load. But I actually trying to remember the old flag moving in, in the far right corner. Um, I got my computer properties, I can browse the network. And one of the big changes we actually had in Windows 95 is now that shift to 32-bit code. There's still 16-bit application supported through the, the thunking process, but 32-bit platform support for plug and play hardware. We see the recycle bin. So when we delete files, uh, it now goes to the recycle bin before it's fully deleted so I can recover things fairly easily. So, I mean, a great feature for the users. This is still running on MS-DOS though. Underneath here, I think we've got MS-DOS 7 running. And likewise, as Windows 95 introduced this new start menu in the new interface, so did Windows NT4. Now there was actually a, a shell update, a shell technology preview for Windows NT 3.51, which I actually remember when I worked at Logica getting and installing, it just kept crashing which kind of introduced the, the start menu. And this is now the Explorer shell. So behind this is the Explorer. So again, looks very, very similar to Windows 95. And obviously I talked about Explorer. So Windows Explorer is the replacement for File Manager. But it also gives us more interaction with the network that we cycle. I remember the My Briefcase for my particular document. Obviously this evolved uh, over the versions mapping network drives, really a whole new interface for Windows. And this applied not just to NT Workstation, but this was an NT server as well. And this is now the interface we have for a long time. Uh, obviously Windows 98, Windows 98, second edition, Windows ME, all of these things still use the start menu. And really shifting over to the NT side, uh, Windows NT4, and then let's actually look at Windows 2000 to see how things have actually changed. But actually, before I do that, I think this one actually has Internet Explorer 2 for a real look at the past. Yeah. Um, and again, I don't think I've got anything that can actually load. I, I tried to put something in. Oh yeah, there we go. So this is like a copy of my website from long, long ago. This is when I had the NT fact in its early version. I found a copy of my website from about 15 years ago. So this loads. Um, but it's one of the only things I can actually find uh, that would load. Funny enough, I was a VMS admin at the time. So lots of stuff about VMS. So now we're at Windows 2000. Again, the same start menu. We have Windows Update now for easier patching. But Internet Explorer is still there. Obviously, we're getting a, a bit better now in terms of its capabilities. It can actually work. So we're now in IE5. Uh, the recycle bin's got a bit of a graphical. There's some updates to the graphical components. We have Quick Launch. So this is an easy way to get access to our commonly used applications just by adding them to this Quick Launch bar to the system tray. Again, search is a, a bigger part. But to all intents and purposes, very, very similar to what we've got. The, the shell has not radically changed. If I go and look at Windows Explorer, again, we're getting richer. 
We now have the ability to customize folders actually using part of the active desktop technology, which comes from Internet Explorer and lets us give different views for different types of data. It enables that quick launch bar. So a number of different capabilities, giving it a richer interface model. Outside of the interface, I mean, some of the big changes Windows 2000 did was obviously the Active Directory, um, a true directory service for Windows, um, an inbox disk defragmenter, um, encrypted file system, dynamic disks, so, so better software RAID capabilities. And also this was a big shift for NT that it dropped things like Deck Alpha, Mix and Power PC. So this is now um, x86 and I Italian only. So in 2001, Windows XP was released and this actually featured a new uh, lunar theme that was officially the Windows XP style. But you can see here, it's got a, a re-visualized start menu, a graphically rich, uh, nice curves, these bigger colorful buttons. Um, and also, this actually introduced um, stacking on the start menu. So if I actually create, let's say, multiple instances of an application, if I just keep opening Notepad, eventually it stacks down. So it takes up less room actually on the taskbar. If you install new applications to the start menu, and they get highlighted. Also in Windows XP, there's the new category view, which is really designed to make it easier uh, to find things for really more basic users, but the classic view is still there as required. Windows XP also had the fast user switching, so I can actually log on as a different user without having to log out. And one of the big things was now remote desktop, remote assistance is a core part of the operating system. So it's obviously going to get leveraged by a lot of things in the future. So Windows XP started to really give us that, that richer graphical experience and was a very stable operating system. Really a testament why it's still used so much today. Windows 2003 was released um, in, two, in 2003. <laughs> Basically sharing a similar, similar interface to Windows XP. The the difference is by default, obviously, it's turned off um, because server's not really focused around providing pretty graphics. But by just starting the theme service, you can actually enable the Windows XP style, which is kind of the uh, official theme name for Windows XP. And then in 2006, we get Windows Vista and then 2009, Windows 7 now. Windows Vista introduced quite a lot of changes now. One of them was Aero and Aero Glass. Now, I don't have Aero Glass running on this one. You can see the basic Aero theme. The Start button has been changed to more of just the, the Windows logo. Search is far more prevalent in the operating system. If we go to Control Panel, I'm in the Category View, I can just start typing something, and it finds me the things. Um, related to what I'm trying to look for. But there were a number of error features because we have a new desktop windows manager that essentially composites the desktop together. Each application is, has its own off-screen graphics buffer, which give us a lot of really cool capabilities, which you only see when you're running um, Aero Glass, which is using that desktop composition. So I'll actually show you that in a little bit. Um, one of the other things Windows Vista obviously is very famous for was the user access control, which in Windows Vista, where it was introduced, you could basically turn it on or off. That's really as much as you could do. Um, as I'll show in Windows 7, this got a lot more granular. So now I actually get jump over to Windows 7. And here I have um, Aero Glass running. So the Aero Glass means a number of things. So firstly, yes, you get these transparent borders, these thicker edges, and um, so windows you can see what's going on sort of behind. 
But because each application has its own sort of off-screen buffer, the operating system and other applications can say, well, what does that, win that application's window look like? So it can use that to give you live thumbnails. So I can actually just see what's going on. And it is live. So let me mute this, but play this video. If I actually go and look, it's live in that thumbnail. It's also live in my old tab. This is a live view of everything that's actually going on. I have Flip 3D, and again, this is live. I'm seeing what's running in these applications as they're going. Again, this is only available with the Aero Glass. I can peek at applications. So let's say I want to see what's happening on Paint. If I just move my mouse over it, all the other windows go transparent so I can see it. I can snap applications using arrow snap to the left, the right, which makes it easy to have multiple things on the screen at the same time. If I have lots of windows open, and I wanna close everything except my current app, I can do arrow shake, and everything minimizes. Shake it again, and they come back up. And these features are there as part of Windows 8 as well. But one of the big changes you notice is with Windows 7, the the taskbar got a bit fatter, but it got rid of the text. It's just showing me the icon, and I can pin icons to the taskbar even if they're not running. So if I right click the solid here and say pin it to the taskbar, even when I close it, it's still there. And I can tell it's running because of the hot color. So you can see when it's running, if I move the mouse over, yes, it has a board around it, but a color of the predominant in the icon shows when I move around where that doesn't if it's not running. Then I just click it. And the application's there. So now I see that, that hot color tracker. Uh, Windows 7 also introduced the concept of libraries, the ability to organize my data, not just on my documents, my pictures or anything else, but instead I can actually create collections of my various documents from different folders, and then I can search focused on particular libraries, and it displays the content based around what makes the most sense for that library. Um, Windows 7 also introduced the ability to boot from a VHD, which is actually a very nice feature, and the user access control got a lot more granular. So instead of just on or off, I have a little slider to control how much interaction do I actually have. Oh, and the other thing I didn't show is show desktop. If I just click here, it makes everything invisible. It's just an easy way. So these are some of the real graphical changes. And you've seen the icons have evolved um, really over where we've come from all the way back from Windows 1. So Windows 8 has this new start screen. Uh, after we log on, this is the interface we see. And I really wanted to just talk basically about what is this new start screen interface and really navigating through Windows. So the first thing we see is the standard icons have gone. We now have these tiles and a tile can occupy, occupy a single space, such as in next floor over here or the SkyDrive or two tiles. And you'll notice as well, these tiles are not just some generic icon. They can deliver live content. So the pictures live tile over there is showing me the photographs uh, in my picture library. The weather app is showing me the, the current weather. I can see what music is playing. So these are giving me information. Even without opening the application, I can actually find out what's going on. So obviously, like the Metro, the phone interface, it's kind of a glance and go. I can very quickly see what's going on without having to launch lots and lots of applications. Now, I have a number of applications visible on the start screen. I can browse with touch. I could, I've got Office and some of my administrative tools, various utilities and like my, my, my core programs. If I have other applications, uh, I can just access them. So anything that's not on the start screen, I can just swipe in from the right, I can search, and I see all my apps. And I can just select it, or I can just start typing for the application I want and it will find it. But the great thing is, I don't even have to open up that search capability. I'm going to talk about more on this in a second. I can just start typing. So I'm on the start screen by the keyboard. 
I just start typing PowerPoint and bang, it finds me the application for me. It's very, very easy to launch things that I want. I can open up my cookbook, whatever. It's my start screen. So let's quickly talk about actually getting to the start screen. So I have these new Metro apps, but how do I get to my start screen? So on the keyboard, I just press the start button. So if I'm in the weather, I can click start on the keyboard, and there we go. From the mouse, I just take the mouse to the far left bottom corner, and then that start tile opens up. And I just click, and I'm back to start. Using touch, I can just swipe in from the very far right edge, it opens up my charms, and I click start. So I want to talk about, there's going to be a number of times I talk about swiping in from the right, from the left, the top, the bottom. When I swipe with a, a touch gesture, I have to start off screen. The way Windows 8 will recognize these edge swipes is it's looking for the outermost pixel to initiate the action. So the safest way to do that is to place your finger off the screen and then swipe inwards. So when I swipe in from the right, this is bringing up the system commands. So there are five charms these are called. I have a search, a share, the start devices, and the settings charm. And these are actually on the start screen to give me information about the, the main sort of system, but they're also sent context sensitive to what application may be open. So if I'm running maybe the cooking application and I click search, it will initially directly search the cooking app but other applications can register in search as well. So from anywhere in the system, I could search uh, the web, I could search my file system, I could search a particular application. Very, very easy to find information on the machine. So for example, um, I showed the search charm we already saw. So I can just search generically the app. So I could say, well, I wanna go and search in the cookbook. I wanna search finance and just type in whatever I want. So Microsoft and bang, there's the information for Microsoft stock. Back to start. There's the AA application. Close that down. I could share information. So when I share, I could be in an, an app like my pictures app and I click share. I could go and share it with someone else. I could email it or maybe I'll go and share it to Facebook. Start obviously brings up this start screen. Devices. So this will change depending on where I am. So for example, right now, it's just gonna let me control maybe my second screen. But let's say for example, I was in an application that I wanted to print from. If I now within the application select my devices, I can see my printer. I select my printer and now I can print. So a consistent way to access um, device options throughout the entire system. And the settings charm, um, I have a new way to do configuration in Windows 8 that's very much touch focused. Oh, sorry. So I can personalize my user accounts, search options, my wireless, all of these things. I still have the control panel. This is just a, an easy way to do the very common configurations and it exposes some of the new Windows 8 features all through a very easy to use Metro style interface. To access those charms, so with the, the finger I showed, we just swipe in from the right, from the mouse, I just go bottom right corner. So I just took the mouse and moved to the bottom right corner, and then I can move up and select what charm I want. Same to the top right corner. From the keyboard, I can just do the Winco's key plus C. And there's also keyboard shortcuts for all the charms. Um, Windows plus Q for the search, H for the share, K for the devices, and then I for the settings. So I have different ways to actually access those charms from the keyboard. So the next type of menu we probably want to need to access, so this is the system commands, swiping in from the right, but now what if I'm in an application? So I'm in that web app. Well, uh, 
the whole point of the, the new Metro is it's very immersive. There's no Chrome, i.e. operating system controls all over the screen. But how do I configure this? So to bring up application commands, I swipe from the top inwards or from the bottom upwards. And then this will bring up application specific commands I can access. Um, the same thing, for example, from Internet Explorer. So you can see I, I can type in the URL there. I can actually pin specific websites to the start menu. But again, if I want to bring up all of my options, I'm swiping from the top. I can see my various tabs I have on the system. I can swipe to the bottom up. So I click that little pin icon, it would pin it to my start menu. So I click it, it's going to let me select a name and that will then just be easily available on the start screen. So that's how I can bring up app commands, swiping in from the top or from the bottom. If I want to access, for example, the last application I used through touch, I just swipe in from the left. So I can just swipe through all the applications I have running. Uh, with the mouse, again, to access the last application, I go to the top left corner and there it is. So I just click it and then I'm switching between the last application. If I want to see a list of all the applications that are running, using touch, I swipe in and then swipe out again. And it gives me the, the live thumbnail for all of those applications. And those are live, they'll actually show me what's being displayed in those applications at this time. Um, through the mouse, I can do that just by going to that top left corner and then going down. So just dragging the mouse down, I'm not clicking anything, I'm just going to the top left corner and dragging down. And the keyboard, I can also bring that up with the old Win tab. So the Win tab in Windows 7 will bring up Flip 3D. In Windows 8, it brings up the Metro app history. So you will notice on the history that if I have desktop applications, they don't show here. I have a single thumbnail for the desktop and that's it. And if I wanted to actually scroll through all desktop applications that are open, I can still use Alt tab. And Alt tab will show me all the different processes that are actually running. So actually this is the desktop. So desktop is still here, so it's not gone anywhere. And those same gestures still work, bring up the charms, go to the bottom right with the mouse. Or I can just do Windows key um, plus C, or I can swipe in from the right with touch. I can still bring up the start menu by going bottom left. So where the start button was before, I would just go to the left. It still works. I just go down to the left and click. It's really not any harder than it was. It's just not a deliberate icon right now. The last applications, all still work. So all those gestures, they still work even on desktop. Jumping back, so let's see what applications I have open. So the Metro style applications, they don't run on desktop, they run inside the sort of Metro interface. I can have two open at once. So what I can actually do is I can take another application, I don't want that one. Uh, let's say, uh, Internet Explorer, the Metro version. I can take it and I can actually drag it onto the screen. So this is Internet Explorer on the right, um, actually in the snapped view. So it can snap to the right or the left and the other app is running in its full view. I can switch them. So I'm now gonna make weather in the snapped view and the other application in the full view. You'll notice that a good Metro application, rather than just shrinking its display, will give you a different layout when it's in snap. So it's really focusing on giving you the information in the most readable format. So you notice it actually shifted how it's displaying things to still give me like the history, so the, the future weather forecast for the rest of the week in that snap view. And I can get rid of the snap view just by dragging it off. So very, very easy to organize my various Metro applications on the screen. Um, one of the things I didn't actually talk about was if I do want to bring up the application commands on the keyboard, it's just the Windows key plus Z. And I can manage the snapping from the keyboard as well using the Windows um, and the period key. 
fucking snap things over, bring applications in that I wanted so I can open up that space. Um, tab it, what's there, and open up an application. So I, I can control all of this from touch, from keyboard, from mouse. And again, from the mouse, it's very easy. I can bring up all the list of applications, select one, and then drag it to, I want to snap recipes to the right hand side. Tack on design, it sounds interesting. So I'll get rid of that. So one question that does come up often is, well, how do I close Metro applications? The point is you don't need to. When a Metro application is not being displayed, it's actually suspended. It's not using CPU, um, it's, not, it's not doing anything. So there's no need to actually close them. Now, some applications can get an exception from that. Imagine my music application. If I'm listening to music, I don't want it to stop as soon as I pull up another application. So applications can make calls, say, hey, keep me running. There's also a Windows brokering service that applications can register with, which will enable them to still maybe receive and respond to specific commands. We've woken up to process something. But generally, they're not going to use any resources, so I don't need to close them. That being said, I can. Uh, the Alt F4 keyboard combination will close an application. If I open up another one, so recipe is using touch. If I just grab to the top of the screen and pull down, it's closing it. And I can do exactly the same thing um, with the mouse. My mouse will turn into a little hand at the top. You can see it's now a hand. Drag, 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 drag. And that's closed it. So we can close them, but you just, you don't need to. The reason it's not obvious is you just don't need to do it. It doesn't want that focal point. Now, my thing I do want to touch on is the start screen. As you start installing applications, it's quickly going to get fairly full, which you don't want. You want to keep this um, focus on the applications you use the most. Remember, I can do the search or just start typing to easily find other applications. So when I have to select a tile, I just swipe down with my finger and it's now selected. I can select multiple ones at once. Using the mouse, I would just right click on it. When I have something selected, I can make the tile smaller. I can make it larger. And notice I can actually uninstall the application. So Metro applications, I can uninstall directly from the start screen. Applications I get from the Windows Store. So the Windows Store actually enables me to install new applications. If there are updates for applications, it's gonna show me in the top right corner. I can just click update. So again, managing and keeping them up to date is far simpler. If I use the store, they're just gonna update the same experience we get about Windows Phone. So I can uninstall. Um, I can rearrange them. So I can just drag it around. Now let's suppose I wanna move it all the way to the far right. Now I can just scroll this way. That's kind of so, imagine I had a much bigger screen. The other thing I can do is just drag it down to the bottom of the screen, it minimizes everything, and then I can just move it up to where I want it. So it's a really a shortcut to move around if you have lots of stuff on your start screen. I can manually do that zoom out. If I just take my fingers and pinch in, I've zoomed out. I can then select a group. And I can name it. So I call that one Office. I can move the groups around very easily. This is a great way to really organize the start screen and really make it yours. Have the things on it that, that you want. And I can zoom back out. Again, with the mouse, I can just hold down the control key and do the mouse wheel down to zoom out or the mouse wheel up to zoom back in. So again, full control. But make this tidy. This is very, very powerful if you Take some time to just get it organized. It becomes very easy to find the applications you want. Um, obviously the windows, no, the only thing I will like to talk about really quickly is if I have non-metro applications, I get a couple of other options. So you can see here, I can actually say, pin it to the taskbar. So I can actually make it pin to my desktop taskbar. I can say, run it as administrator opening it in a new window, open the file location. So I get some additional options for non-metro apps. But let's jump over to the desktop. Oh, that's not desktop. That's my wallpaper on another machine. 
do it my desktop. As we were saying, it's, it's very, very similar. All the same gestures work. I, if there are apps that you use a lot from the desktop, just pin them to the taskbar. As we talked about with Windows 7, I can, these applications aren't running, but they're pinned. I still have a non-metro version of Internet Explorer, so I can run all my snappings, etc., within there. Um, Windows Explorer has changed. It now has the ribbon. And what's great about the ribbon is it's contextual to what object is currently selected. So let's say I select, right now I've got a music song selected. So I'm using touch here. I can play it. I can do library management. If I select my computer, it gives me options to access the control panel, look at the system properties. If I look at a particular, I'm doing this all through touch. If I select volume, well, there's drive tools. I can defrag it, clean up. So it's going to change depending on what I'm currently doing. So it just makes it a lot easier for me to use. So it takes some getting used to initially, but once you actually start playing with it, it's very, very powerful. Task manager has gone for a bit of an update. So I can right click on the taskbar, set task manager or control shift escape. I can see all the processes and I get, this is actually the detail view. This is what you get by default. It just shows you the apps and I can end tasks. So this is another way I can close things. I don't want reader, end it. Or I can do more details. This is the more common task manager we're used to. But we now have a heat map for what's using our resources. So I can say, hey, what's using all my memory? And okay, the desktop windows manager, that makes sense. That's what actually creates all nice error effects, those live thumbnail views we get, everything else. We still have all the same error peak, all those capabilities are still there in Windows 8. Do the, the shape theme, the error shape is still there. I can do the error snap, everything we had in 7 is still available, except for the Flip 3D, because the key combination for Flip 3D is that Metro app history. I can see a heat map of what's using my resources. I can see basic performance charts of what's been used in my environment. I see a history of my application. So this is great. So if you think about uh, normal usage of a machine, maybe my battery life's not doing very well. well. I can see which application historically is using on my CPU. If I'm paying for my network bandwidth, which application is using up the network? What amount of memory? is being used to update live tiles, etc. So I can really see what's going on in my environment. I can see what apps configured to start up. Now, I don't have anything on this box, but what does show very well is it will actually show me the impact. So it's got a high impact, a medium impact, a low impact. So that means it's slowing down the machine start. If it's a high impact, it's taking time away from how quickly my machine can start. So I would select it and then disable it. I can see the users on my machine, details of processes, services, etc., etc. One other thing I, I did want to touch on um, before I, I talk about sort of the multi-monitor experience is the logon experience. So if I do have a touch, only maybe I have a state device, which is actually what I'm demoing on, but I have a keyboard and mouse attached to it as well. My normal password may not work very well. I do have a great on-screen keyboard, but we now have the option to create a, a four number pin. Or I can create a picture password. And the picture password is a series of three gestures. So that gesture could be a, a single touch, a single point on a picture I select, or it could be a line between two points. So the best way to really show that is to just demonstrate mine. So if I lock my machine, uh, they're my twins, so they're Halloween costumes, they're a cat and a dog. This is my pitch password. So my pitch password to log on is I touch each nose and his mouth, and now I'm logged on. This is machine specific, this is not stored in Active Directory. These gestures and these picture and pins are used to access the encrypted password for my account. So that's on each machine. So if I have five machines, I need to set this up five times on all of the boxes. Um, but it does give me a very easy way to log on to those, those touch machines. So, I mean, hopefully this has showed this is the new sort of start experience. We have the store, we have the Metro immersive application. I can navigate very easily. Yes, I can navigate great with touch, but I can navigate great with my mouse. 
people, the desktop still, and it's actually more powerful. Nothing's really taken away from it. So now actually, I, I wanna go to a, a more complicated setup. So I actually look at multi-monitor. So this is a, a setup with three displays. <coughs> and this looks exactly the same as it would do on Windows 7. Um, I can have different applications open. I've got the left one for my like communications, so email, link, messenger, some gadgets. I do most of my work in the middle of the display, so there's Word, there's PowerPoint. On the right-hand side, it's virtual machines, and um, maybe if you want to play Xbox, <laughs> uh, that's over here as well. And <clears throat> Windows 8 is not stopping me doing any of this. It actually helps in some regards because the taskbar Usually it was only available on the primary display. That's changed. So taskbar is now available on all of my displays. So on the left one, for example, I could jump and bring up that application that's on the far right monitor over here now, where I can minimize it. So the taskbar goes throughout the, all of the displays in my configuration. The only thing that's special about the main monitor is the system tray. The system tray is present on the main display. And also you may have noticed just then, if you, if you focus on this side, is when I go to that bottom right hand corner, it brings up the charms. If I go to the bottom left corner, it brings up the start menu. And I could keep going up to see any Metro app history I have there. But when I launch the start screen, the other displays carry on doing whatever they were. I could still um, see any media that was playing virtual machine management. And I've organized my application so it's very clean. I only actually see the apps that I use a lot. And if there were applications I, I don't have shown here, I could just start typing it and it would make them available. If I need to, I can move the start screen. So by default, I've got it on the center screen, but if I do the Windows key and page down, I cycle right, or page up, I cycle left. So I can move it around, and whichever display has the start screen, when I'm in that desktop view, it's gonna get the system tray. It's gonna to respond to the corner gestures to bring up the start menu, etc. So I guess if I just move it now, I've moved it to the right one, the system tray has gone, and it's now over here on the far right. And the start menu I can now bring up through the gestures here. My charms show up on the right monitor. So whichever display has the start screen, it's gonna have the system tray as well as gestures. That's really the only difference. And there's, and I, I felt the same initially that, well, I can't see anything now when I've got the start screen. But if the way I used to use the start menu, I click start, find the application I want, which may be going through various menus. I'm not focused on the rest of the screen at that time anyway. I'm focused on that start menu and trying to find the information. Well, it's now a lot more available. It actually uses up the screen. I can very quickly now jump to the application I want. And the key thing to remember is, of course, there's apps that you always want in the desktop and just pin them to the taskbar. They don't even have to go to the start screen. So it's not taking away any of the configuration to power use anything once you get used to it. It's actually very intuitive and I actually find I can work quicker now. So I just wanted to just show the, the start, how it really does integrate very well um, in a multi-monitor, a more advanced configuration. Of course, Windows P plus D uh, can just jump to the desktop as well. So hopefully that was useful. Hopefully that gives you some ideas. This is the consumer preview that I've been showing all of this on on Windows 8. Things may change and I'll update this um, as needed. Uh, this is a companion to chapter two in the Microsoft Virtualization Secrets book. So that has more detail on everything I've talked about. Um, but I hope that was helpful and I look forward to uh, seeing you again in future seminars. Thank you.